So the thing is, yeah. we had an idea to start to do all this coronavirus time, to do interviews and to, yeah. to be together, like with these kind of yeah. things. Um, and uh, you guys, some people don't know, let's say that some guys in Korea from the new gym don't know you. And other oh, people, okay. like they may be Joe, maybe not. So to make us yeah. more connected. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter if I train here first every day, or if I'm in Korea, or if I'm uh, George in America, or if I'm in Macedonia, it doesn't matter because you're a big family. And yes. uh, I decided yeah. to do this. I decided to, to start with Rob because Rob uh, was one, I don't know if it was the first, but one of the three first guys trained with me here when I came to Australia. He's from, uh, from Neutral Bay, from yeah. Uh, Mossman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah when, all the way from then. Yeah, so that's when uh, I started, that was 2000. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Rob was much bigger, much earlier. Now he's getting better. <laughs> he got married, now get more so soft, he got better. Yeah. Uh, him, so get, it's better. That time he just yeah, Maya, put in shakes. <laughs> yeah, Maya, Maya actually feeds me nice steaks, healthy food now. We do better. That time was protein yeah. shakes. I mean, no answer. Protein you. shakes and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> actually, oh God, man, it was about a hundred and... 116, 118 kilos when we started, and yeah. I was, I was pretty fit as well. So I was, you know, back back then, back then in the 90s, bigger, bigger, stronger, faster was the way. <laughs> in the 90s, just having fun at about okay. Yeah. So what is this? Yeah. Let's start with uh, okay. So Robert, Professor Professor Robert Namoski, the black belt third degree. Yes. The roots, uh, trained with me since 2000, since I arrived in Australia. And we got all this time, all these 20 years around. Uh, has yes. a school in uh, St. George in, in, a, in a big area here in Sydney, if you never came to Sydney. And he's been in this life for a long time, training, competing, uh, doing everything we, we, like, like we do, or of us always do, and teaching our big yeah. gym, kids, adults, and everything. So what's going to happen is, I, I wrote some, some, um, some questions, basic questions to it to Rob. Rob going to answer like... Yeah like whatever you want. So we can go from there to other questions, other things, but I have a base yeah. here. And you guys watching, if you want to ask something, I'm going to, we're going to talk to these ones first. And then if you want to do a question, just write the question there and I can try to, to put in the, in the talk. Yeah, I think that would be the best way to, to, sorry, to do this. Yeah, so let me just put this here. Yeah. And, um, okay, so Rob, uh, Anything you want to say before starting it? No? You want to be asking? No, we, we're, we're basically celebrating 20 years of roots. Who would have thought that we would have hit that milestone, which is a, <laughs> which is a big, it's still, it's still a big year for us, even though we'll, we'll do it like this, we'll still celebrate. Oh, yeah. No, but you're gonna be, we're going to be fighting soon. This is just your. Yeah, way. very much so. To take time and put weight on. When I go back, I go That's back right. to the heavyweight division. <laughs> oh, done. <laughs> That, uh, the idea was for us to go to fight the world champs this year, but let's see if it's going to happen. I don't know. The, the yeah, past. pretty much. Okay. So I start with some questions and go from there. Yeah, okay. no problem. That may like normal question for everywhere in the world when you do a thing. Why did you start martial arts? Doesn't Actually, I have, in I have an original story. What I did when I was 12 years old, I watched Conan with the sword, right? And I watched him smash everyone with the sword, big muscles and everything else. And I was on my push bike and I went past a hall in her school. It was a scout hall and they were swinging swords. I stopped, looked from the corner of my eyes and went, that's it, like Conan, I'm joining. <laughs> so I sat and watched for about, you know, 10 minutes. The instructor was, uh, his name was Dean Gum at the time, came up to me and he goes, oh, you have to be 13 or 14 to train here. I go, how old are you? I'm 14. <laughs> so straight away I said that. And, and, I, and my life journey in martial arts began from a scout hall in her school on parquetry where we had to do our forward shoulder rolls, backward shoulder rolls, everything that you would normally do in a traditional martial arts. We did uh, back then. And I started off with uh, nin, ninjutsu. And uh, that opened up the world of martial arts to me. From there, obviously, I continued my training. And did you use the sword? Oh yeah, still do, you know. <laughs> I started, started off with a bok, started off with a bokken, and then at university, um, a guy was doing sword drawing, Aido. I did that for about four years. 
and enjoyed it, enjoyed it quite a fair bit. And then I kept uh, my ninjutsu training at the same time. I did some wrestling and boxing. And then obviously with uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coming into the world, showing its effectiveness, uh, with a couple of students from ninjutsu, we were looking for a jiu-jitsu place to train. And one of the guys, uh, actually Terry from Wollongong, showed me a place in uh, Bankstown. There was an instructor there. And at the same time, I didn't realize the owner of Pacific Gym was a blue belt, Wayne. He was one of the first blue belts in New South Wales. Yeah. And he asked me to come downstairs for a role. And I thought, ah, you know, this guy, is, he's in his 40s. He looks about 65, 70 kilos. And I was, on the, I was on the treadmill and I was running pretty fast for a big guy, you know. Back then, I was about 150 kilos and I was, I was reasonably fit. It looked like kind of like a footy player. And he went, yeah, come down, Rob, we'll grapple. Man, we grappled for an hour and a half. I'll never forget. I must have tapped about every two, three, four minutes for an hour and a half. <laughs> At least he commented. He goes, man, you're, you're very fit. People yeah, usually die in 10, 10 minutes. And you're what, 120? About 115. There's a, there's a fair yeah. fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair fight. Actually, Robert Beck was there because I asked him to come downstairs. He didn't come. We just finished squatting. Me and Robert Beck just finished squatting five plates. That's 20, what's that, 100, 100, 220 kilos. We've done, we've done our squats. We finished, and I went downstairs to grapple Wayne, and we pretty much started training jiu-jitsu from then. From there, we found we were training with Wayne twice a week, and then Saturday afternoon, which where I found boxing with Joe LaFellow, we trained with Luke at the Lions Den. And then what happened, what happened after that, um, we saw an ad in the paper, actual, a real Brazilian and a black belt. And we went, oh, well, Wayne showed it to me and he goes, Rob, let's go. So then me, Wayne and Steve came down and we drove over the bridge to Mossman and Wayne couldn't come as often because he was running a business. But uh, basically, me and Steve, you remember Steve when we yeah. went to his wedding? Yeah. And then me and Steve uh, pretty much hit it off and joined. And then when we came to um, Bondi Junction, Wayne came a little bit. But then obviously, being at that age, running businesses, etc., it was a little bit harder for him. But it was uh, perfect for me. It was exactly what I was looking for. Looking for some hard training looking for competitions and, well, everything else that I wanted in a martial art he had. I still kept my ninjutsu training at the time, but jiu-jitsu became my, my biggest focus, and it pretty much became everyone's biggest focus. I mean, me and you then, straight away, a year later, we presented jiu-jitsu in Rockdale at a karate school, at my mate Robert's uh, karate school. Yeah, yeah. And, be yeah. and before that... Um, I think you had some issues with your visa. You couldn't train us anymore. And then me and Steve were getting you to catch the train to Ancliffe and we'd do privates. <laughs> I think at that point, at that point, you were only allowed to do privates. We weren't sure if these guys are going to stay in Australia or not. And we thought, shit, man, we're not going to find this again. Come on, Paula, let's go. Three times a week, we were training in the Macedonian Center. And my yeah. friend gave me the keys. Yeah, remember, that was a long time ago. Okay. And then from... Old house, really run down, proper. That's the way we started jiu-jitsu on awesome. very old mats. Yeah. 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 And then uh, things came good with your visa. And uh, we got together. I think you got together with Ivan. And we kicked off roots after that. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's basically been my journey towards, uh, towards jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. That that was a, a, a funny start then because... When I was yeah. there, was the gym and Brad put that ad, or it was in Blitz magazine, Brad, Brad put the ad, yeah. didn't tell me. And suddenly it started to come people, I said, Brad, there's other people, what happened? Oh, I just put an ad in the magazine. I said, no, oh, so crazy, yeah. crazy man. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot declare I'm teaching. At the time, because there was a tourist visa, I couldn't work. And he said, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. I said, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Doesn't matter, we had cash. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. It's good, but. Yeah, so people yeah, yeah. Say, I remember. And then we did the Macedonian. Cool. Yeah, so that was yeah. the start. But uh, I think, um, and I, following this, I have a question that people some nowadays, because Jiu Jitsu became so popular or because martial arts became a bit softer, and uh, yeah. I always to understand what, what do you think about the importance of fighting in our society nowadays? You have to know how to fight, it shapes your character. This is it. There's no way around it. You have to be assertive. 
Now, if you, if you learn to fight, it, it changes who you are. You have that confidence for conflict and, and you can be proactive in things. If you don't know how to fight, as men, anytime an argument happens, you're, you're, you're passive. You have to be passive. Now, the more skillful you are, the less you'll fight. That's obvious. That's been proven. We don't have to discuss that. But as, as men, we are physical creatures. And as physical creatures, learning to fight is the most important thing that can shape your character and actually humble you. Because you realize in a gym, you're, you're not in, there's a pecking order of people who've been there before you. And, and I've had men come in, like really big, strong men come in and go, oh, Rob, you know, I thought I could handle myself. And Uni, Uni, Uni said that, he was a football player, and he goes, man, you guys tore me apart. I felt like a little girl. And I go to him, well, Uni, be careful, don't offend me, it'll bite you as well. So basically, um, in giving you the confidence in shaping your character to be assertive in life, you know, fighting is the most basic element that you that everyone needs to pretty much work on and from there you can build a whole lot of other things in your character the confidence will come less anxiety will come you know you know yourself as as a person if there's any situation then you can handle it just like we are handling it now you know for example the loss of our income our gyms being closed that that's, that's okay we are tackling it the way we would have fight we are proactive with it this is, and this is what, what fighting teaches you, not just to, to be able to physically fight off people, but in your, in your everyday life, being proactive with things instead of being uh, non-active or even, even, which is quite sad, submissive. Yeah. And in a very comfortable society we live in, that's what happened. You know, people become too submissive and complacent and then, uh, then you don't know how to dig yourself out of a hole. I think people, people lots of time confuse Fighting with violence. No, what you fight. Very you're not, different. Fight not that you be violent. It just means that you are confident. Like you said, they give you confidence and give you respect and give you all the all the things that uh, come with it. Not just oh, the guys are fighting is violent. No, lots of fighters are not violent, but they are assertive and they will defend themselves or defend whoever they need to. That's that's, that's and right. And and just just look. a second the the, the, the charge. But keep saying, keep saying. No, no, no problem, no problem. Yeah, and, and usually the, the most important thing is if you come up against someone who's used to violence and you can't fight and you can't match him with that level of violence, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. So the whole point of learning a particular skill and making it street effective is to as well, we understand violence and then we are, we are proactive with it. So um, in... In, in, a violent, in a violent situation, absolutely, you need people who, A, understand violence, and then B, are proactive in their approach to a violent situation where you can de-escalate. Of course, the first thing you try and do is de-escalate it, remove yourself from that situation. And if at any point you can't, then you just absolutely just come down on it like a ton of bricks. You just remove the the dangerous element away and do it you know any which way and shape you can and this is what jiu-jitsu gives you jiu-jitsu gives you a solid base of movement and techniques for you to be able to sur survive a, a pretty serious violent situation and on the other hand it's not just about surviving a serious violent situation you can handle uh other situations that don't require severe violence i don't know a drunk relative at your home or someone that's uh you know non-compliant and you need to get them to you know get them to leave a room it's not all about just being able to do these super violent things that people uh i don't know other systems of martial arts seem to be advertising you know oh no no we're just so deadly we learn to kill people oh we're just uh very very street effective when in in reality these people have never even had a punch thrown at their heads Yes. Well, this is, this, is, this is the problem. And this is why competitions are very important. Because yeah. for, for, for a young person, you get the anxiety, you get the fear, you get the butterflies in your stomach, and then you're stepping in against that. And the more you learn to do that, well, the more confidence you, you'll gain that when I do get those anxieties, when I do get those fears, I will be able to step forward in these situations and protect myself, protect my family, or de-escalate be able to de-escalate a situation you know whereas other other people who've never experienced it buckle 
and with and and we've got people where for example i don't grade them until they show me that they can overcome that fear it doesn't matter how successful they are it's not about competing in the competition it's it's taking that martial arts journey and overcoming overcoming that fear the anxiety that okay you know i will step forward in these in these situations as, especially when you when it comes to a physical confrontation and nothing was more more relevant than that than one of our black belt jason awara now jason back then was what 45 years old injured with his neck and his hip i think he was walking on the treadmill doing some rehab work a really big guy drugged up was hitting an old asian guy outside the gym you wouldn't believe six seven men were standing behind the glass watching this now these, these were all men you know muscled up well over 90 100 kilos none of them stepped out jason stepped out grabbed the guy by the neck and lay, laid him down on his stomach and just whispered in the ear relax 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 held him by the neck and the guy didn't move he was totally compliant the cops came jason got up and this guy really got up angry i think one one of the police officers sprayed tried sprayed the guy in the eyes hit the other police officer and they were tackling him and the whole thing went went crazy Whereas you got one 45 year old man who was able to handle a guy pretty easy on his, on his back, four or five others mm. probably would have hurt, hurt him and hurt themselves. So it should even be compulsory for police officers, you know, later yeah. on, when we come back, should actually the government should fund police officers actually fortnightly to have them come and train. It's, yeah. it's better for them. It's safer for them. And these are people that we need to train up, you know, because they're risking their lives out there, keeping us safe. Yeah. Too many politics yeah. there. Ben, ben our, our instructor in Canberra, is doing a curriculum and trying yeah. to teach the, the federal police there now. I did some, some, some two seminars there, but like, it's still very political instead of being efficient. Like in America, yeah. they, they found Jiu Jitsu, they brought Hicks and all the guys who teach the Marines. Teach Straight everybody. away, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, but uh, yeah, so that's it. I think, I think that's the thing. Like, the uh, mm. importance of fighting is important for everything. And now we can see now that the the kids, Jiu Jitsu became very popular now in Australia for kids because oh, yeah. the importance of the confidence and everything else and the mothers and the fathers understand that they need that. It's not about the violence side of it. It's about the, no. the other side of everything else, education and everything else. So the point that's growing in Australia, I'm happy that's growing in Australia because coming back to 2000 when we were, when I arrived here and we, we met each other, there was yeah. no, there was no Jiu Jitsu. There, there was Karate and there was other martial arts kids do, but Jiu Jitsu is very important because make them get control the other ones they just get aggressive you know you, you just make them have control but yeah that's a very good point fighting and and, and, and violence is not the same thing all the time sometimes mm -hmm. it is because you need yeah. the yeah and uh yeah that's right yeah i just saw that giovanni here from brazil my black belt from brazil is in he's saying that don't tell our stories giovanni our stories with you are going to be telling in another in another chapter <laughs> yeah that's right I, you're here to the australian story and how more is that that's too? right I see lots of people going in. Uh, Who else is there? Ryan Barkley. Ryan. Lots of people there. I cannot see everyone, but let's keep going here. So, yeah. yeah. Guys, for this new generation, it's also good to know, like, old things and, uh, and concepts of things. Not, like, just go there and do the fighting, spin around and go on the floor and go no. on the no, the, the concept and the ideas and the what's behind the, the, the scene, right? Because oh, 100 percent because i teach the same thing to our kids like even for example this helped my daughter a lot my daughter's a shy girl and if you shoved her she just you know you know just just shy away i said to my wife look she has to train before school starts i can tell by her character i think psychologically they said i think i'm not sure whether it's 51 percent nature 49 percent nurture or the other way around i think there's a there's a consensus on that so basically jiu-jitsu did wonders for her and um now she's she's quite confident she's done a whole year of competitions and lost every single one before she won a comp and there's a there's one girl that always seems to be her and first time my daughter said oh i fought her too easy second time i fought her harder this time i felt i fought her mm. really hard yeah, but it's, it's that it's that character confidence and then i yeah. think there were two boys two boys in her year that are quite quite rough quite rumbly but she comes home and she goes, yeah, yeah, these two boys, yeah, they're too scared to war with me. I think one touched them, she sprawled on them. <laughs> she sprawled on them on the concrete. Everyone else freaked out. Now no one touches her, you know? But as, especially as a girl, having that confidence to know that, yeah, you don't, you know, just to, just to be able to stand up yourself, stand up for yourself 
and, and, and be proactive, it's, it's done wonders for her. For my son, it'll have to, we have to do it the other way around. We have to hammer him down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I've, I think with jujitsu, you can, with martial arts, you, you can find that happy medium, you know, whether you have to hammer him down or, or lift him up. Either, yeah. either way, either way it, 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 it gives you that centeredness, you know? Yeah, and also, and also I think, uh, I think one thing you said before, like um, when you go in the gym, you, there's the hierarchy, I think there's the back order. Right, so yes. you have, even if you are tough, a tough guy or man or kid or whatever gets there, someone gonna hum humble you down. There's a fact yeah, very much so. The line first, you eat less, you know, you, like we say in mm -hmm. Brazil, you don't get in the poison seat in the window, you get in the, yeah. <laughs> the worst. Yeah, you get at, at, at the back. <laughs> hey, James, that's right, that's right. James, you, hey, James, what's up? Uh, yeah, that's right, you know. All right, so yeah, so that's that's amazing. Well, the, the work of the kids is, I think, is one thing that I yeah. started as a kid, and you you also like your story you said before, you started 14 years old, so basically a kid, and uh, martial arts give you that challenge, give you that uh, that uh, confidence, mm -hmm. give you that that, that, that that social network that you have to 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 face. All you face there, all you're gonna face in life anyway. So we already had a good experience. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else. What's your? Oh, that's a good one. What's your best memory? Oh, um, training. Okay. Training really, 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 really hard at the Hakoa Club, being everyone's dead tired from training. Then we sit and we have lunch after training. We all did that. Then we go for a swim in Bondi. Yeah. We finish our swim with Bondi. We sit, we talk, and then I have a shower, and then I go home and I start tutoring. That's the best memory, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. That, for for all of us, the Palo's original original competition crew, that that lifestyle was second to none. Where we actually we got to, and and we used to train like crazy next to a heated swimming pool. This was the third floor of the Hokawa Club, next to a chlorine heated swimming pool with three square mats, and we do a wrestling class. 10.30 to 11.30 beforehand. We'd rest for half an hour. We'd do an hour and a half of jiu-jitsu, come back, and it just, yeah, those, those definitely was, was my best memories. Absolutely. Yeah, that, you know? yeah, that, was, uh, that was Brazilian, like a Brazilian jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Training, yeah. what, uh, eat, and, uh, and uh, to the beach. That was like Swim. The, Swim, yeah, the, yeah, that's, yeah. And then the second, the second one was um, just growing up together with my students. I mean, I tell them sometimes you, you realize you're a brown belt, you're 10 times better than when I started teaching, you know, and just having, having those years together with us, all of us together, you know, seeing, seeing everyone develop. They went from young kids to businessmen now to black belts, to having families. Um, some of my, some of my previous students that quit bring me their kids now. It's in the contract. If you quit, I take your first born. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. You got to be careful what you sign the paperwork and just having, seeing that whole community around us, you know? Part of the army. Part of the army, yeah. So having, second is obviously creating the same memories with, with the community of, uh, of people and students that I have around me that are not just students, they're my friends, they're my family. And that's who's actually supporting us right now to making sure when we open up that we are more than comfortable to open our doors. And I'm forever grateful for them, you know, and they're all, all of them have put their hands up. Some people even asking me, hey, do you need money? I'll lend you 10, 20 grand. I go, no, 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 it's okay, you know, yeah, like good. we can. And, and yeah. also, uh, and, um, and as you say, like, a, a Become a family. Like the came, it's funny that this is history about Jiu Jitsu. This, this fact about Jiu Jitsu that came from a great from a family that was a Gracie family, and yeah. it's still a family nowadays. Like after almost a hundred years, when Elio Gracie learned the uh, Carlos Gracie learned the Jiu Jitsu, they have more than a hundred years or around. Right. The yeah. And um, when Elio Gracie and it was their family, and they make the, the the students become part of the family, and we still becoming a family. It's different than all the martial arts. They don't, I don't see any other martial arts has this link as a family. Like you go there, you make your friends, and of course they have friends there, but it doesn't come this so link the uh, connection. Yeah, no. the, the teacher and the students and the students in between themselves and the kids and the kids of the kids so become keep, keep growing. No, it's, it's a, it's yeah, like, you, 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 yeah, it's you, you build you build a community around you, 
and yeah. then you are you are part of that community you have a responsibility to that community and yeah. um and and you feed off each other and that's yeah nothing nothing beats that that's and that's is, what is, that's what keeps us going bigger, yeah. um, not to be not to be biased but i think a bigger touch of the brazilian on jiu jitsu became brazilian jiu jitsu race jiu jitsu that became brazilian jiu jitsu is that there is not that distance between the sensei or the or the, the teacher whatever it is as japanese martial arts or the martial arts and the students but there you never i could not see a i don't know a karate guy or, or another guy or a traditional martial arts like those japanese ones and some others but basically the the, the eastern uh, asian ones they don't have connections they don't come to the teacher and talk and go for lunch or go this or yeah. that, that but but and yeah but, but people Yeah, but people don't understand that there's is that's a cultural thing for them when we bow like this that's a handshake that's the same as a handshake so we do both we bow as in hello i greet you and then i shake your hand whereas when you came to the west a bow people got confused and and saw it as a sense of worshiping mm. and this this became really bad with the traditional martial arts and this is why this is why they they're dying because they didn't evolve and adapt into into our western culture as they should have whereas what the brazilians did have an advantage where they got the art for a couple of years and were left alone so then they had a chance to develop it into their culture without yeah. having that influence from another culture pushing down yeah. on them and this is this was the advantage their advantage wasn't so much with the brazilians and the russians as well with the sambo it wasn't um or that the techniques they all got the same techniques but having another culture push their values into you well the translation is a little bit a different like for even sensei for sensei in our culture is like well this guy is something special whereas i don't quote me i'm not very good at japanese culture but i figured sensei was some kind of, someone something you'd call someone older respectfully like in masarani it's called chich or i don't know what it's called in brazilian like what would you call someone your dad's uh, friend <laughs> That says the professor, yeah. the teacher, the professor, the teacher. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's it's a teacher, professor, you know, something something like that. Whereas it, I think uh, the traditional martial arts lost their way a little bit in Western culture, and yes. I think the media the media did that a lot. The media feed fed the films, etc. Yeah, I, I know, I know, especially with with ninjutsu, like we we never wore those black things with your eyes. <laughs> We never, we never, we never jumped out of trees and killed people at night, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, yeah. And, uh, and I think just the entertainment and the media kind of had that perception about martial arts and even, even having that, that notion that, that one person holding a teacup can bash six people because he has this skill. People would believe that. I even had, when I started teaching jujitsu, one of the guys asked me, Because back in my back back in the nineties, it was it was a bit more physical. There weren't no cameras, so street fights were more common uh, when you'd when when you when you'd go out. Yeah, you know when you'd go out. I mean, we were allowed to fight, and it wasn't a question we were allowed. It wasn't seen that bad. If someone touched you, you punched on bouncers threw you out. The bouncers hit you on the way out as well. And well, technically back then, I don't really remember seeing one punch deaths. Because uh, if something happened, this guy was a dickhead. He was sorted out by the bouncers or someone else. Easy. Whereas now, whereas now, it's it, it's a lot more dangerous. Because I saw that one bouncer, the bouncer chucks him out. There's cameras. He went to he went down the road. He punched the muta guy in the head. The muta guy turned around and pushed him. Didn't drop him because there's cameras. He walked down William Street, punched the 18 year old boy in the head and killed him. Whereas twenty uh, years, you know, thirty years ago, that guy would have been sorted out very quickly, you know, at least two hours before. And I, I think this is this is where things get a little bit safer, technically, but more dangerous, a lot more dangerous. You you think it's safer now? Man, yeah. I had I had a, I had I had friend of mine, um, a guy I used to play soccer with. They were twins. His twin brother got a little bit drunk when St. George won when St. George won the grand final. And he was there. He was a 35-year-old man. He wasn't fit, a little bit tipsy, got into a bit of a scuffle with the security. Security threw him out. Police came and he got into a scuffle with police. And I think they body piled on him. And the guy lost his life. Whereas uh, yeah, I mean, 
this is a 35, 36 we were all devastated, you know, whereas previously a bat on across the leg, you just drop. You're not going to lose your life. You're not going to get a body part one. But a bat on across the leg looks bad on the eyes. It looks yeah. violent. Five, six people jumping on you to, to subdue you. Now, that doesn't look violent. And I think the most thing, where we've lost our way is you need to actually ask police officers and let them do their job. Okay, what do you need? What works? Okay, you decide. If you want to bat on someone, you let the police officers do this. They're the ones risking their lives. You don't tell them, oh, do it this way because we don't like the way it looks. And is then, and, and then, uh, and then when they batten someone across the legs, put them in court, put them in court for, uh, you know, excessive force. I mean, uh, we're, we're kind of doing it to ourselves and making society look safer. But in yeah. reality, is it really safer? I don't know. You've got to ask yourself those questions. And, and this is, this is why I have a lot of respect for police officers because they're not just risking their lives. They've got to deal with all the stupidity and everything else. I mean, look at just what happened today. You've got a cardinal who they let free on, on pedophile charges. You've got a police officer, a detective, who was trying to catch a criminal. Oh, he didn't take someone correctly, and they charged him. Where do you... I mean, well, it's these just, are things... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I don't understand this, you know? That's... This is this is this is why I, I believe with uh, with people who are actually risking their lives, you, you need to listen to them more. Let them let them do their job properly. And I, I think with with jujitsu, in any, if, if there's any way that we can help, yeah, definitely. Every time I say police officer, have a smile, have a chat, you know, ask them how their job is going. Any way we can help you, guys. If you want to come down to the club, let me know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, this is I think as a society, this is important. Um, is it safer? Does it look safer? Mm, yeah. Is it really safer? Well, mm, I don't. I don't particularly know. You know, like it's 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 really up for up for debate. Well, technically, we are very 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 safe. So I mean, compared to hundred years ago, you can't compare. But we're just talking, you know, from the, yeah. the last twenty thirty years. You know? Nah. Nah, that's, yeah. that I have another one for you. What's your worst? Yeah. What? what? What's your worst memory? I, I, I don't actually. It's your fault, Paul. I don't. Re, I don't remember. <laughs> actually, 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 no. What it What it was? This is a funny story. I was, I was boxing and I had three, four really, really hard sparring sessions and I was concussed. But I didn't tell Paul because you know I want to train. <laughs> so I was reaching for a cup. I couldn't grab it. Little did I know he was Paul. I was preparing my blue belt rating. <laughs> It wasn't and me. yeah, and 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 back it, then, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't him. <laughs> and back then, I I didn't want to seem weak. I didn't want to. I wanted to make it hard. You know, I wanted to go hard on him. I wanted to, you know, like so everyone can see. Far Rob really fought him. You know, and and we started training. And I figured, oh, it's gonna happen. Oh, maybe, maybe not now. And Alex Paradis was uh, training me. We were training with Alex, and I go, why is Alex going softer on me now? And he whispers to me. He's, he's doing it now. <laughs> and I went, oh, all right. So I got ready. I'm ready for Paolo. This is it. I want to show him that I'm more than ready. And he grabbed me by the neck and he choked me. <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? Where is he? He's meant to be in front of me. <laughs> and he choked me again. And I fought. I fought in my mind. I fought pretty hard, you know. But I felt pretty embarrassed after that because I think Ivan goes, you actually threw a punch at Paolo. I go, no, I didn't. I go, yes, you did. You threw a punch. I go, what happened? You shaped up like this. And Paolo goes, good. This is what I want to see, a fight. And I threw a, I threw a punch without remembering. And I felt pretty bad after. I go, fine, man. I'm, I'm, I'm meant to, you know, I'm meant to prove to him. I'm not meant to punch this guy. This guy taught me everything I know, I know in jiu-jitsu. But I think it was, uh, I should have, I should have known better. I should have said, hey, look, you know, I'm concussed. I've had a hard sparring session for for boxing, etc. I've been hitting the head a little bit too hard, etc. I've got to take it easy this week. And it's it's basically non-communication with your instructor. Whereas if I did that properly, Paolo would have gone, oh, okay, okay, no worries. You know, he'll do whatever he needs to do next week, week after. So in, in all, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so I think uh, I think uh, that was it. The, the the grading itself was okay. Like it, uh, people say, oh, the gradings back then were hard. No, man, you just woke up, fell asleep, woke up. I mean, it's happened to me but 15 I mean, times. Punch and what happened after the punch? Did you hit me? 
I can't remember. Ivan said that to me, and and I felt embarrassed. <laughs> hey, thank, hey, thank, thank, thank God I did, and I, well, I, it, it'll be the worst thing, worst thing you can possibly do to your instructor, you know. But um, but every everything else, the the occasional dickhead I have to kick out every nine months, it happens. Once in a while, one guy, yeah, I mean, one guy, um, he was a young guy. He didn't understand the cleaning protocol. And I think he understands now. So I kind of saw him after we had a chat. Every, every so often, you, you do get into a bit of a situation where, you know, you have to show that, okay, man, you know, this is martial art. And this is, this is getting pretty serious now. And you know where the step is going to hold now. And as an, as an instructor, you have to have that presence about you. You can't be, you can be a nice guy. You can be caring towards your students, but if it reaches a point where, you know, nah, okay, now you're becoming destructive. This is it, you yeah. know? That's and I, I think, yeah. Yes. That's the thing I think about like instructors sometimes want to be too soft or too nice to the students and they get out from the martial arts principle. Doesn't matter what martial arts, Jiu Jitsu principle no. is going to be fun. But like, you know, like the students are there for discipline, for, for learning, for everything, of course, not to be a dickhead and hurt your students no. all the time. But sometimes you have to put some discipline in the class. You have to put some, you know, like some order in the, in the, in the, in the place. Ah, this, that, the like, people. Oh, yeah, darling, do this, do that. So then that's it. No. The bash suffers and disappear. Ah, if it, if it was like that, I've been to martial arts where it's like that. My mate took me... Like, I like, I trained Aikido, but it took me to this other Aikido school where the guy was like that. I just quietly left. Like, people, I just quietly left. I go, man, this is, this is bullshit. Is you that, know, whereas I, I, I remember training Aikido with another instructor. Man, they, he was tough. This is where I come from. I don't, I don't come for you to, to pamper me. If I want to be pampered, you know, I'll go watch a nice movie or something. I'm, I'm, I'm coming yeah. to train martial arts. Every, everyone knows when they come. I mean, I even do the same thing with, with, with our kids. Our kids know, they line up, you do something wrong, you get push-ups. I think you saw that with my son. My son was five, of course, I'm, I'm not abusive towards him, but yeah. we had you, George, you, George, you and George there for a seminar. Now, this is a very big deal for us. You know, he's lining up, he's being a little bit uh, cheeky. He done push-ups in front of the whole class and he's five. And this yeah. is, they like it a lot. They, they really, they oh you we get your to sounds and where where others don't you know and this is uh, and this is this is very important to to keep that discipline and abuse is very different discipline are the rules are the rules for everyone it becomes abuse when you do something different to someone else than someone else but the rules are the rules and you follow them so your sound going funny rob just move back a bit yeah I fix the connection there. Cannot hear you. Hold on now. Yeah, that's good now. It's good. Talk. No, I cannot hear Hello, you. Hello, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you can hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I, I, I think discipline is, is the most important part. This is why people come to train. They don't come to train to just learn a bunch of techniques to have, you know, to, they come so you can instill discipline and then they enjoy it because of that. You know, yes, this is but, this is very important. But it's changed yeah. a little bit in Jiu Jitsu. It's getting like, not, not, I'm not saying getting soft because it's not the point getting soft or not, but it's getting like out of the line of a martial arts. And all the martial arts happen too. Jiu Jitsu is going to happen in some place. But people come, oh, this and that. So they get a, one day, someone go a bit hard, hard on them and maybe squash them a bit after they already learned. And then they, oh, I don't want to do any more because I'm, it's not aggressive, man. You have to pass through the process. And the process is, is part right. of the process. That's what you're here for. Oh, it's, it's, it's like our building school, a house. People. Our school roots and our school in George and Marcel Benning and all these. And lots yeah. of other schools around as well, as well. Keep this tradition. Hey, you have to keep that. We have to keep that because I think it's a, it's a very important part to keep the martial arts alive. Yeah, it's, it's the only way. If you want to build a martial arts school, where you just have a bunch of quick students come and they'll leave straight away. It's like building a house on sand. You want to yeah. build a house with strong foundations, there you know what to do. I mean, yeah. even if oh, no, no, I, I want to run it as a business, you want to build a business with strong foundations, well, it's the same thing. 
it's, it, it's exactly the same thing. A business with strong foundations, well, this is where, for example, today we're having these problems with medical masks and everything else. When uh, I think in manufacturing, the American or Australia had businesses with strong foundations and then they did the same thing, cheaper, 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 everywhere else around the world, world and mm. now they're stuck. Now they're building, now again, they're looking at going, oh, okay, maybe we do need to manufacture our own things, et cetera, et cetera. I think I saw, uh, uh, there's a guy that's pretty smart, uh, Eric Weinstein, he's a mathematician as well. And even he said the same thing. He goes, he spoke to a CEO and the CEO said, look, man, if it's for my national interests, I would, uh, the best thing is to do our production here. If it's for the shareholder interest, we look for cheaper alternatives overseas. And this is, and this is why, you know, we're having half the problems we are having now, but I think we will learn from them and martial arts schools as well. Good luck. Go open up a school where, where you, you will uh, just be soft and collect their money. You yeah. will have a student on average nine to nine months to a year and a half. Whereas jujitsu, we retain our students the longest out of any martial art. I mean, yes. you, you, yeah, we retain our students up to say, you know, four or five years, which is blue belt. I mean, for us, for us holding a martial arts student four or five years to blue belt, I mean, any other style, that's a black belt. They don't get to black belt in four or five years. They all, they all leave. I think the average time is nine months to 18 months in a more traditional martial art. So, I mean, there's something to say about the fact that we laugh, oh, you're blue belt, you're going to quit. But in any other style, our blue belt is their black belt. We get more blue belts than they get black belts, but maybe they make a lot of money because they get a lot of people in through the door, they grade them fast and a lot of people out. But what you do then is you burn an area out. So even, even as a martial arts instructor, that's definitely not the way to do it. I mean, you're, you're looking at, it's, you're not building anything of value. You're not building a community around you of, of, of people that you can rely on or they can rely on you. They see you as a business. Thank you for coming. See you later. And it's, and, and, and it's, not, it's not what I signed up for when I came yeah. into martial arts. And it's, and it's definitely not, not what, we che what we teach. You know? exactly. Yeah, that, I think that's a very important point. Okay, so let's jump on here now. Uh, and Hickey just asked before, we were talking about it. He asked, how long did it take to your black belt, to get your black belt? Uh, 10 years. To, uh, for, with, with, uh, training with Paolo, 10 years. I trained about three, four years before Paolo. But, um, man, the nine months I trained, like, it was interesting. We'd done about three and a half years before. And uh, then when I came to Palo, the nine months we did training with Palo, when I went back with Wayne and the other people that were training at the bottom, they went, Jesus Christ, what the hell? What are you doing? <laughs> like they were, I went, I don't know, man. Some, some voodoo magic you need to come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, just... Uh, because imagine, you know, we, we had blue belts. That's all we were training with. And then we have a black belt come in and it, this, is, this is, wow, you're sparring him all the time. He's fixing you all the time, you know. And then those, those, those nine months, one year was, 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 was amazing, you know. It was like, wow, you know, I, I could actually see my skill, you know. And, um, and so properly, properly, 10 years, um, all up, you could say I did 13 and a half years to my, to my, to my uh, black belt. But I'd say 10 years, 2000 to 2010. Yeah. Okay, so then another one here. This, if, uh, if I wrote down one of these. Who is your yeah. favorite martial artist? Oh, God. Um, my... Okay. For, 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 okay. <laughs> well, the biggest... My Look, there's a few. For, for me, my jiu-jitsu... There's, there's different people that built me. Paolo did my jiu-jitsu, absolutely. So, so Paolo built what is jiu-jitsu, the whole engine, everything. So when you say build an engine, he's the one that molded it, created it, you know, put the pistons in and everything else to create the jiu-jitsu for me. Um, George Pereira fine-tuned it. He's like the mechanic that comes in and sees what you, what, what, what you need to fine-tune. Um, I'd say, uh, for, for me, it's definitely Paolo. Obviously, I've spent the most time with him. We've, uh, we've rolled the most. Um, we've, we've grown this together roots. Uh, in terms of inspiration would be George Pereira, obviously. 
Um, in terms of people non-related to root, um, I'd say uh, in Australia, um, in particular, an Australian would be Richard Norton, definitely. The man's just trained martial arts his whole life. That's all he's done. Um, always say if his uh, martial arts skills were like his acting, he'd win an Oscar. But unfortunately, he's a really good martial artist. His acting is good, I guess, you know, but um, I don't really follow that. I follow, I've been following his martial arts career. Um, for boxing, Joe LaFello, Joey. Um, yeah, he's, he, he got my hands moving really, really well. In uh, kickboxing, um, I'd say uh, Jim, Jim K and Adam Adin. They, they did my kickboxing. Uh, wrestling, I had Igor, Igor Prap. As a, as a wrestling coach when they were part of Roots with us together. Um, with uh, nin, Ninjutsu, I was part of the Bujinkan, first with uh, a Wayne Roy's group. We were, we were together. I had a few instructors from Wayne Roy's group, from uh, uh, Dean Gum uh, and, and onwards. I had uh, uh, Dean, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've had a variety uh, for knives, etc. Okay. I actually really like Ray Floro, but um, like I said, these these, these other uh, these other people are specialized in certain fields. Yeah. And I think when you when you reach a point in your martial arts training, you actually look for people who specialize. So if you want knives, you definitely go to Ray. You know, Ray Floro. That's all he's done for the last thirty years. If you want jujitsu, let's say you're a martial artist, you're a taekwondo black belt guy, you come to us. We specialize in this, and then we can we can fill in the gaps that are missing in your martial arts, as well as the way I've had um, other people fill in the gaps, for example, with knife edge weapons and other things, you know, that, you know, everyone else does. Okay. Yeah. And what's the best fighter of all time for you? Fighter in general? Of all time? Like Dixon Gracie. Uh, oh, uh, I'd say uh, Fedor Melienko. Best one. Definitely. Yeah, Fedor. Fedor, um, like, for, for, for 10 years, he was an undefeated heavyweight. And the way he moved was, uh, in, his, in his prime was, was amazing. He could punch, he could grapple. I mean, yeah, he'd hit you hard, you'd fall on the ground. You know, he, he, he's, he seemed the most well, well-rounded, you know, yeah, from, from, his, from his hands to his wrestling to, to his groundwork. So, you know, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say Fyodor Melienko for, for me. And he was Russian, crazy motherfucker. Oh, well, I'm, well my, 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 I do have a certain part of me that comes... I'm born in Australia, but I do have that Eastern Bloc square head look. Yeah, that's so, it. They like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Bring time. Hey, uh, Hick is asking yeah. us here, what was yeah. the hardest belt to you, for you? Hardest belt? Uh, hardest belt, I think, was brown for me because I did everything in... Everything happened in brown belt, you know? I, uh, I was super ridiculously super strong, getting ready, got my brown belt. Um, then I, Paolo asked this one guy, Daniel, I had him in a headlock and Paolo asked him to do a self-defense move and he sat through my kneecap, blew it out. So I had to have a knee operation, rehabilitated my knee as my brown belt. Um, and then my school got bigger on my brown belt, et cetera. A lot of people started coming in for training. Yeah, the hardest belt was, uh, for me, was brown belt. The easiest belt was purple belt. I think purple belt, I was purple belt for 14 months. Less than that, maybe 13 months. I think I got my purple belt. I think I went to the Pampax, you know, I won the tournament. A year later, I went, I won the tournament again, and I got my, uh, got my uh, purple belt that way. Easiest belt was purple belt. Hardest belt was brown belt. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Steve is asking here... Um... What's the difference between Brazilians and Australians when it comes to training? I think from I, the... I don't I I think it depends on the on the on the character. Um, it's it's hard to say. I've had all different kind of Brazilians come. I've had all you know your your working professional Brazilians come that or that'll come in. I've had Brazilians come as blue belts, brown belts. I think maybe one group. Yeah. Maybe it's in, 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 in terms of it's, I don't know. We are, we are such, we are such a multicultural society. Um, it's, it's hard. It's very hard to pinpoint a difference because it's just on the individual character. 
I can I can give you Aussies that train really really hard, but then Aussie Aussie with what Aussie? You know, you can break him down to um, or was he I don't know Scottish background? Was he this background? Was he that that background? Brazilians, it's just another ethnic group in our society. So I didn't see anything quite different with the Brazilians training at all. You know, it's it's we're a multicultural society. It's another ethnic group that walks in through my doors. I've got white folks that are Brazilians. Obviously, we've got a black folk Gustavo that came in. There's a there's a Brazilian. I I can't really really pinpoint anything different with with the Brazilians than the Aussies when they when they you know when they come to training. Now, now if you have a Brazilian guy that comes in as a black belt. Well, he's been training jiu-jitsu for 15 years. Well, when Ozzy's been training jiu-jitsu for 15 years, they have that martial arts is what gave them that mentality. It wasn't, it wasn't the fact that they were Brazilian. It's the fact that they did jiu-jitsu that gave them that perspective of training hard, no, no different to anyone else. We are such a large ethnic group where, I don't know, it's hard to see the differences. Uh, I really don't Maybe he's saying something about Brazilian and Australian method of training, but I, but in my opinion, I think um, ah we we do the method you 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 taught us. Like I don't I don't. I mean, I mean jiu jitsu is jiu jitsu. I mean, what is what is the Australian method of training? Yeah, there is no Australian method of but training. Result of, that, result of that, in general, like yeah. Australians are doing very well nowadays in in outside mm. in uh, out there, like oh. Gino, Gino and everything. Have Australian world champions in Gino, Gino. Oh, Gino, 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 first wants to go, but like. Nowadays, like we were, that was what 2003 when I went to uh, Philip Andrew and Dave. But now, yeah. 17 years later, like Australia is, is on the top there. There's got very good yeah, that's gyms. and good yeah, gyms. That's, yeah, that's right. Very good gyms. That's there. right. Yeah, there's there's that there's that certain part of the martial arts molds you into that similar person. So I mean, if the Brazilian and they're Australian, if they've done 10 years of jiu-jitsu and they they're pretty serious about it, I mean, they kind they kind of feel the same. It's like the same person, you know. It's uh, and this is this is where eth ethnicity doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't make a difference if a person's a Brazilian comes in as a white belt, and I don't know, someone from Taiwan comes in as a white belt. I mean, you're training them the same. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly see a difference that I can answer. Okay, so the other one, Tommy is asking. Tommy trained here in Oringa Mall first, asking which country outside of Brazil. Do you think has the best jiu-jitsu and why? Uh, well, America, of course. I mean, you can't beat it. America's population, 350 million people. They get the first of everything. They bring the Brazilians to, to uh, from 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 Brazil. They went to America. They set themselves up. You know, I mean, it was through. It was because of America that Brazilian jiu-jitsu had its chance to go global with uh, Hicks with uh, Hori and Gracie opening up the UFC and Hoist beating everyone. So the Americans were ahead of everyone in terms of uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So yeah, you can't, if it's, if it's another country, you, you just can't beat America. I mean, they were the launching, they were the launching platform for, for Jiu-Jitsu, for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to spread around the world. You know, so yeah, you I mean, you'd, you'd have to say America by a long shot. Yeah, I think I think so too. And they have all the support for the sport and all those things yeah. that was necessary. That's right. And and they and and they value grappling. I mean grappling in America is part of their high school. Yes. High school. They do wrestling, so they value jujitsu straight away. Just it just fit in naturally with, with what they do for sport and everything else. I mean everyone goes, Oh, oh wrestling's better now. Man, all the wrestlers have wrestled for years. They've grappled for years. Three, four years of jujitsu. For a wrestler, man, he's already grappled for 10 years. He's super fit, he's super, yeah, he's yeah. super strong. You teach him jiu-jitsu, oh, but can a jiu-jitsu guy three years take on the wrestler? Well, you haven't. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so, so back. So we have some more time. All right, done. So, so back to the question. Yeah, the Americans respected it a lot. And they, they helped Hori and Gracie um, to, to launch the UFC. Uh, I think Chuck Norris helped the Machado brothers to to establish themselves, etc. And uh, being and having that, you know, the strong economy that they have, were able to launch it through to the rest of the world to what we have now. I believe if it wasn't for America, we wouldn't have had everything that we have in jiu-jitsu now. Yeah, and I think about Americans. Of course, they're smart and they think they're first economy, but also they see when a thing has value. 
they take it and use it and that's not right. learn it. So that's what they do. You know, from anything, yeah. from the Japanese, from whoever. They say, okay, these are very good martial arts helpers, so let's do it. Let's put the police, the military, the competitions, the sport. Let's support these guys. Let's exactly. So, yeah. It's yes, it's right away. Yeah, that's why yes, they are very good. Okay. Um, there was a, a question here before from Liam. Uh, from the mall, from the ring of mall, ring of mall here. Uh, he's asking, mm. what's your advice for a person who is struggling with a move? Like struggling to learn that move, struggling to use that move. Okay. Best advice Paolo did for me, right? <laughs> I was competing and I had to tap everybody out. I had to tap everybody out. This was it. It was in the white belt. And I tapped everybody out except the final, right? And... The guy took me down. I had him in guard, man. I had to tap him from guard. Paolo screaming, sweep him, sweep him, sweep him, sweep him. Man, I was tapping this guy. That's it. Time ran out. I didn't sweep him. And he got pretty upset, really angry. Oh, you're stupid. You don't understand. I told you to sweep him. I told you to sweep him. I went, oh, shit, I'm going to cop it in training. So when I went back to training, he went, Rob, with Andrew, 50 sweeps. All right. So I drilled the sweeps. Okay. Oh, shit. Andrew counted him. And then when I rolled Paolo, I actually swept Paolo. And then Paolo goes to me, see, even stupid people can learn jiu-jitsu after I swept him. <laughs> and which was, which was the way we did things back then. But if, I mean, is the move, do you have that move with another move behind? Like, do you just want to physically do something to someone? Or are you setting it up correctly? Or maybe you're just not getting the timing of when that move works. When does that move really, really work? This is what you need to understand. When a person lands in a certain position, the move works and you get it. And yeah. if, you can, if you can see when your move works, then you keep trying it and trying it and trying it. Practice it on white belts first. When you get good at white belts, then you move up to blue belts. This is what I do. I practice my move on white belts. And when I'm rolling them, it can be like a drill. I just hit that move, hit that move, hit that move. Then I try it on blues. Okay, my timing gets a little bit better. Then I hit the purples with it. Okay, see if I can catch them. Then if I can catch a purple and a brown or a black doesn't see it coming, I'll, I'll catch them as well. So slowly, there's a pecking order. The pecking order is there for you to practice these new moves. So you want to learn a new move, catch the white belt, move your way up, move your way up from them. And this is what white belts are there to do. A white belt are there for, for you to sweep them, for you to tap them, obviously respectfully, and they learn from this as well. They learn their escapes. And the better the white belts get, uh, you not pulling the moves. That's when we grade them, and that's 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 the way I I kind of do my training. Yeah, and I think and I think the important thing to to say, like you said, the order is there. The white belts are yeah. there for us to do on them, and in the other way around, mm. they're learning because if you are pressing yeah. them, the first ten times you're gonna sweep the easy. The eleventh time they already so oh they're gonna try that move again, so we start that's to right. run. So it's good for everyone. So that's what I say the guys many times as you used to say to you that but yeah. that time and I used to say guys. It's not a party. Don't let the guy do on you. No, of course, don't hurt anyone, but pressure moves, do on him. His job is to escape or to do a back on you. So both, both. That's right, him. yeah. Whatever he wants on you, just because it's a white belt, full white belt, nobody's learning. He thinks he's learning, but he's not. Yeah, yeah, that's right, you know. And and even, even moves are escapes. You want to practice escapes, let the white belt mount you. Throw him off and tap him. Let, let him go inside control. I mean, sometimes... You know, I want to get a really, really hard workout. Big guy, monster, 120 kilos. You know what? I can't be bothered lifting weights. I'm going to get a strong workout. Put him in side control. Now fight him. Get him off. <laughs> you know, and you, you, can, you can adjust your training, you know, to when you said practice moves, you don't have to just tear the person apart. Start from side control, especially after you've tapped him, and then fight hard and then tap him again. You know, get yourself out of a bad situation yeah. and then tap the guy after that. You can make your training. We have Flavia here now, an old friend from me, my old friend from, mm. from Brazil. She lives in France and she says, doesn't understand right. anything. Can you speak French? Oh, bro. Bonjour. There you go, Flavia. You can speak French. Bonjour. Yeah. This is morning name in French. So we... Good. Any, any other questions? We can... All right. Um... Yeah. A Flavinha que está aí? Ou, 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 ou Mr. Cabeça? Hum. É? Marco Antônio está aí também? Marco Antônio is a, is a black belt from De La Riva. He's training for me. He's training for me in Brazil. Hey, hello, Marco. 
like as husband and live in France. They live there. Nice. The, the, the country in France. Very good guy. Tough guy. Little but tough. <laughs> All right. Uh, guys, if you want to have a little questions. Yeah. No problem. What's the... Just let me see yeah. a second. Uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just uh, you're far away. Yeah, we can um, uh, yeah, discuss. Okay. Okay, best advice for a 40-year-old white belt. That's Tommy. Okay. Okay, yeah, what you, when you're, when you're, well, 46 myself, what you do is make sure that after each training, you can still do a little bit more. Don't, don't kill yourself completely, you know. The most important thing are your joints. So what you do, you do the warm up at your pace. You don't race anyone. You do a, you do your, do, do your stretch. Do your techniques then, right? Don't go stiff on hard on, on, on anyone. As soon as you feel your joints swell up, this will stop your, stop your jujitsu training. So the first thing is obviously learn, learn slowly to defend. You don't have to get out of a bad situation. You just need to find a hole to breathe in a bad situation. If, you're, if, you're, if your arm is injured, put your hand in your belt, hold your belt, get your partner to do the same thing. Just slowly work, out, work around your body and don't push anything 100% especially after 40, I mean, I roll everyone the same. 60%, I roll the guy who's 60 kilos, I roll the black belt, I roll the brown belt, I roll the white belt. If he gets around my guard, he gets around my guard. That's it. He got around my guard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend it. If I've got the submission, I've got the submission. If I haven't, he escapes. I'm not going to rev dump into anything. And, this, is, and this, this allows me to keep fit and give me a really good workout as develop my timing and also allows um, the student as well to progress as well. I mean, I had a, I got over, I got pretty sick a few years ago and my jiu-jitsu got so much better because I started doing it like this. So at some point, if he's past my guard, he's past my guard, no problem. You know, I can defend from side control. If I can't defend from side control, I try, I tap, we start again. And this is, this is the best advice for, uh, for, for 40 year old is obviously fight, but be a little bit reserved, as in have more in the tank. Don't just go 100 miles an hour, as in I'm going to get stiff. I'm not going to give the choke. I'm going to sit there for the next three minutes. I'm not going to tap. Your mistake was a while ago. Figure it out after, you know. This is, this is, the, this is the best thing for a four-year-old for you to, to, keep, to keep enjoying your training. And then slowly, your 60 70% of training will seem very different to someone in two years' time. They'll think, man... What the hell? Look how hard this guy's going. No, you're still going 60, 70%. It's just that your techniques improved, your timings improved, your jiu-jitsu's improved. Yeah. That's my advice. Uh, and another thing, guys, um, just to or let you know, remind you, Rob, you start jiu-jitsu in Macedonia. We have jiu-jitsu. Roots is in Australia. We have 12 gyms now. We have uh, yep. fi had 15 gyms last year in Korea. We're supposed to open two more. And then he starts in Macedonia. have five gyms there, so... Uh, Big work for a long time, but how long have you been going yeah. there, Rob? Three years? Fifteen years? Maybe? Since, uh, yeah, 10 years. 10 years, actually. We had our first, we had our Black Belt Ivica now after 10 years as well. Yeah, Ivica. And, yeah. Um, I coach there. Yeah. Uh, we have a federation, a former federation, and just we started this conversation about Macedonia, but Steve also asked, what's your plans for Macedonia? So you can explain a little bit. Oh, about man, for, 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 for Macedonia, the hard work is, is done. We've laid very, very strong foundations. And I was very fortunate enough that um, they contacted me as I was going there. And they said, oh, look, you're the first black belt of, uh, of, of that ethnicity to have a black belt. Do you mind coming doing a seminar? And, and over there, martial arts is pretty, pretty relevant in, in every aspect. I mean, they've got the toughest karate guys, the toughest judo guys. And being from an, from an Eastern Bloc country, the men there are tough. There's, there's no other way to be there, you know? So, so when I went and presented these techniques and I went, oh, wow, man, these, these, these guys are really taking to it. I mean, just the first seminar, we said, yeah, free of charge, whoever wants to come. I wasn't expecting much. Man, there was over 200 people there. And this was in wintertime and the hall inside was minus 10 degrees. And everyone came. <laughs> yeah, every, <laughs> every, yeah, everyone came. I mean, uh, like... Like in, 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 in countries that have been devastated from socialism, 
you know, you, you you grow up a little bit more harder than 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 what we are than than the way we are. So martial arts just comes more natural for for all of them, and uh, it's it's the environment as 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 well, you know. So um, when I I started going back there year after year, uh, thanks to Ivitz and his organisational skills, the government you know really helped us out with the federation. And um, yeah, and they just took to it like uh, duck does to water. And now there's brown belts there, there's a black belt there. I reckon give it, you know, three, four, five more years, there'll be five, six black belts there as well. And the place has gone stronger and stronger. The reason why is each city had experienced martial artists to take on, to 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 want to learn jujitsu. These people weren't, oh, I'm just going to start now. No, they were kickboxers, karate guys that had been training for years that had a lot of students. So um, they saw the value in it straight away. And uh, we, we, we got into a really, really good relationship with uh, all the instructors there. And it's just getting stronger and stronger. And what's the plan? Mm -hmm. I think the, the plan oh. is to grow the schools, grow the schools more, uh, educate the community more about jiu-jitsu. Um, only the martial arts community seems to understand it. And people now with the internet and everything else was give it, give it more of an exposure in Macedonia and then actually have more community and involvement with jiu-jitsu. Um, and they're starting to do that. For example, Dejan in Okrib, uh, his school now is in a public school where they've given him the hall. Um, Ivica has got a professional studio, you know, Petse in uh, Prilep is... Uh, he runs, he runs the security in there. Martin as well in, in Kumanovo has got that more of a community involvement. So I think now instead of attracting all the tough guys, it has to uh, reach out more to the general community and start bringing them in. This, okay. this, this is the plan. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that was basically like what we did here about 20 years ago. When yeah, we yeah, it's, yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Ten. So building up, building up the, the jiu-jitsu around the world, that's, that's Yeah, great. that's right. But, uh, I have two more, two more, maybe three questions for you. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yes. Yeah, we have a long time, but but it's nice. nice. Thanks everybody for being there. People coming. Yeah, in thanks now. guys. Thanks for the support. You know. Yeah, it's good to know because it's good to to, and guys, as always, we say if you live in Sydney, you have to go visit around the gyms. Come to my gym. Yeah, always. To, go to Rob. If you Rob students, go to Dave and to and to James and everybody else because it's always good to know the people, you know, like yeah, know Trips and Alex yeah. visitors. That's why you have so many gyms. Because it's good for mm. you to go visit train with our 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 family. Not go to other gyms because it's not allowed, but like go yeah, to we'll gyms be... and so many of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so got Michael in Wuhan uh, as well. I got one yours. Let me see who what, what, what uh your life your life if there is one out of the gym. Talk about a bit what you do, or what you, what you, what you like, what you eat, what you, what you, what, what, what's around, what's normal life. Uh, uh, I teach about twenty-two classes a week of <laughs> jujitsu, and uh, my life outside the gym. Uh, you know, I've got a two kids, wife, pregnant, expecting our third child in July. We're expecting another boy, so there'll be more more kids on the mats. <laughs> you know, and uh, I've uh, I run a maths tuition center. So it's, uh, I've got a tuition center 100 meters down the road from the jiu-jitsu gym. So I, I work from the tuition center to the martial arts center. Um, it used to be the other way around. Tuition was more, jiu-jitsu was less. And then the role swapped where my main, it's about 70% jiu-jitsu, 30% tutoring. And it wasn't that tutoring got less, jiu-jitsu got more, So which, was, which is a good thing. I keep uh, always, I've always been fit. I've always been healthy. There's never been a time where I can say, I wasn't fit or I wasn't healthy. It's just a thing I've always done since I was an uh, athlete, soccer player, and then moved, moved into martial arts. Obviously, people say, what do you eat? I tell you more what I don't eat, which is easier. I'm giving you a diet, I'm not a nutritionist. There are people out there, you can, you can talk to that. There's students I've got, for example, like, like Marco does these things, Pass does. Pass, yeah, Marco, Marco's really, really good at these things. But I, when people ask me, what do I eat? What I don't eat. I keep sugar down to a recreation like when we sit at a restaurant and maybe i might get something too sweet to fit in um i don't eat processed meat um i eat a you know pretty healthy diet of meat and vegetables 
unless uh, for religious reasons I do Orthodox, I'm an Orthodox Christian, I do the fasting for, for, for Orthodox as well. So that's kind of like a vegan diet for about 20 weeks a year for religious purposes, not for, not for nutritional purposes. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kept me, kept me fit and healthy. So no processed meat, sugar is almost down, down to zero. I joke with alcohol and arachia, but I have very little of it. Again, it's just a recreation yeah, from sugar, sugar, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sugar, yeah, sugar, sugar and alcohol for me are recreation. So, um, we'd sit down, go to a restaurant. Well, maybe not for another five years cause we're broke now. We can't afford restaurants anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But no more restaurants. But when we used to, before coronavirus, when we used to go to restaurants, you know, so I'd, I'd have a glass of wine with friends. Maybe a guest would come over, have a little bit of spirits. Obviously, I don't drink any beer due to a medical condition. But uh, yeah, but that's that's basically, and it's and it served me well. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm for my age or just for anyone's age. I'm, I've got a you know pretty pretty good body fat percentage. I'm pretty fit and pretty strong and then plan to be so, you know, for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah that's the moderation too. I used to be more radical on these things, but now I'm, I'm eating better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and having a loving, have a, having a loving wife that knows how to cook helps a lot. This is very important. <laughs> it will make or break you. Simple guys, no, do it whatever you can. When you have a wife, you take care of it's better. <laughs> that's the best, best way to eat, to eat healthy food. Nothing beats that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yes, another one. So it's good because sometimes the guys think, yeah. oh, these guys are jiu-jitsu 24-7, but we have a life too. We right. you know, go do other things, we maybe sometimes do other sport, or we eat sometimes some, some bad food, but not all the time. Sometimes, yeah. okay, you're going to eat this yeah. or that, but then next day you are back to the routine. So it's, it's important right. that you take care of your health because if you, you know, like when you are young, Normally, you don't take much care, but after you start to learn how to do that's it, right. you take okay. So, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think of food as a diet. I just know, look, this is poison, don't eat it. This is bad for you, don't eat it. You know, eat things that are good for you because I need my body. This is this is my job, you know. I've got to take yeah. 20 plus classes a week, I need to be physically active. Yeah, but this so, is not so, nice for people, yeah, it's exactly. Like, you no, know, have fun do things but like take care of your health because otherwise you're gonna gonna go before us and you shouldn't yeah money okay, Rob, uh, Imad yeah. is asking what is your advice for the young boys out there with a lot of free time uh, young boys out there with a lot of free time man train absolutely train there's nothing more tragic than not 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 fulfilling the potential of what your body can do absolutely i mean if if you have a lot of free time, you're enjoying jujitsu, man, train and train and train and train. This is, this is your time to train. This is your time to compete. This is your time to test yourself. This is your time to see, you know, what you can do. You know, if, if you don't, it's, it's sad. It's, it really is sad. I think, I think Plato, I think was some will, I, I forgot which philosopher said, you know, there's nothing more tragic then you're not experiencing this, you know? And, 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 and I think this is for, for young boys that have the spare time, man, get in there. We have morning classes, lunchtime classes, afternoon classes, you know, you're only going to work eight hours a day. If you're permitted, come in the morning, go to work, come at night. I mean, you're young, you're single. This is your time to, to, to do this, you know? And, 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 and we have people that actually are, are, are doing it now. And for someone else that's, ah, oh, I just, you know, want to come once, twice a week. Okay, great. I understand. Come once, twice a week. It's great. You will get fitter. You will get benefits. But if you're a single guy living with your parents, right, and you have all this free time, this is the time for you to, to actually um, train hard and experience what it is. Have that, have that feeling of that sense about you of, oh, you know, look, man, we trained hard, you know, this felt good. And we... This is, this is what we did at the Hakala Club. Absolutely. I mean, we, yeah. we trained very hard. I mean, even, even for example, when, 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 when George came, mate, we did private every day for, for two, three weeks when he was here. And, and, you know, on top of that, wow, this is Paolo's instructor. And it was very important seeing the relationship Paolo had with George. This is what cemented us 
in, in, into jujitsu. And we did, we trained every day, every day. We did privates every day. We, we were in a, in, in a some way crazy com committed to it, but this is, this is what it takes. And you'll actually develop as a person if you can commit to a craft and get very, very good at it. And if you enjoy jujitsu, that's what you do. doesn't mean you'll always enjoy it. There'll be a times when it's hard, it's tough. Man, I can't get around these brown belts. God, my God, they're sweeping me. A month later, boom, tap them all out, you know? And, and it happens. You'll go through your ups, you'll go through your downs. As you're going through your downs, when you think, oh man, this is not going good, this is hard. When you can come to training then, that's a test of character. It's not about just feeling good and feeling nice and oh, I don't, now I like it, now I don't like it. No, it's the times when it's hard to come to training, when you're feeling tired, when you're like, oh, okay, no, no, I'm going to come and actually have the training session. Like they said with a workout or anything else, same thing works with jiu-jitsu. There's no such thing as a bad training session. The only training session that's really bad is the one you've missed. All right. Uh, I have two more, two more questions only. Yeah. So we will talk about most of the things here. The guys are asking questions. Yeah. Here, but uh, uh, what's the plans for now? Oh, just uh, just take take our take roots and take our our club to another level, another level of skill. This is the plan. This is why we always have our meetings. This is why, as instructors, you know, we always have that back and front solutions that we're trying to solve is basically open jujitsu up to a more wider community and, uh, and, and service that, that community. Give them the benefit of a healthy lifestyle. Give them the benefit of, you know, sh seeing what your body can do. Having, having the fulfillment of, okay, you know, like I've never competed before in my life. All of a sudden now, you know, I'm actually winning tournaments and, and fights and watching, watching people's character develop in the process. So basically, uh, you know, doing what we're doing to uh, to another level, and it's it's not just about tournament. It's about you know being being proficient at defending yourself and your family as well, and just uh, exposing it to more people, growing roots, growing our clubs, and uh, making sure that the people that have trained with me that are that are black belts that have come through uh, St George and are opening clubs, growing them as well, giving them. The, uh, the advice, the support and everything else, you know, like I, I see it in my, in my students as well. Oh, wow. You are where I was three years ago. Oh, three years into training. Oh, wait, you are where I am in my first five years. You know, this is where I was five years when I first started teaching martial arts. This is where I was three years when I first started teaching martial arts. And then uh, kind of giving them the guidance of, okay, this is what I believe you need to do. This is what I did wrong and I learned from it. And then they will they will progress through the same way and learn and evolve uh, as 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 uh, we have. That's the plan. That's true. And and it reminds people that competition just helps you. You're not like or something. Oh, so yeah, every. every. just gonna push you further and, and better, make you better. So it doesn't matter win or lose. You're already proud of you because you are competing. The results, the result. You just have to build up your. Uh -huh. Everyone, everyone that stuck to jujitsu has competed. Everyone, there's, there's, there's very few people. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine you go to play yeah, soccer, it's... play another team, and beat the team to get better. So, improving. And then the mm, last one, right. uh, that I wrote here. If we have any other questions, you can write there. We still have some minutes. Yeah. Uh, what I put here advice for people starting the BJJ journey now, and one for people who is already in the journey. So, one advice for who is starting now, let's say a white belt beginner, or one advice for who is already there, maybe a white belt more advanced, or a blue or purple, and advice for them. Just right. in for, a, for a white belt beginner, um, lay, lay your foundations. So, what you want to do is, is categorize straight away, make sure you're filling in your categories. Okay, I need to know my self defense. This is it. This is, this is what I need. Absolutely. I'm, I'm coming here to be able to protect myself. If something happens, I can't train jujitsu in nine months, I can walk down the street and be confident that I can get out of situations. So have that category. Have that category. Then the second category, have that of defense. Okay, you know, in this situation, the person's beginning to attack my arm. I defend. In this situation, he's beginning to attack my neck. I defend. You know, so have that sense of defense about you. What I believe is three times harder to tap someone out than it is for them to defend you. This is why when you're, when you're going for attacks, 
it's harder to tap someone, it's more physical than for you to sit there and just block, 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 block and move. So get that feeling of defense. And then the third one is uh, find the enjoyment in it. You know, it won't always be enjoying, but remember a time when it was enjoying to get over that, that low point and you will hit low points. So you like it, you like it, you love it, you love it. And then a low point will come. I just understand that it will pass. All you have to do is push through it. Uh, that's, that's my advice to beginners. To more seasoned people, um, just work your other side. So for example, if you're a purple belt, now pull out your best moves you can on people that are better than you. So you're a purple belt, you've got brown belts, you've got black belts. There are moves that work really well. Catch them. Absolutely go for it, you know. Sharpen those moves. On people you are better than, so tap them once, twice, then put yourself in bad positions and get out. Work your side that you are not that good at. Everyone's got one side that where they're very, very good at. Everyone's got another side that they're not that good at. I mean, I had that discussion in between a roll with, uh, with one of my black belts. Just got his black belt. And we're rolling, rolling, rolling. He's trying to pass one side, trying to pass one side. I'm defending, trying to pass one side. I'm defending. I go, think, everyone's got two sides. You're trying to pass my good side. Think, is it, what is my bad side? It's a little bit more strategy now. And then he did. He came around to the other side and then I was in trouble with all my neck. You know? But this is the thing. Develop both sides. So, um, you know, if you're a brown belt, you're rolling a white belt. No, I'm going to force him to come on my bad side. So I can develop that side, get the timing better. You know, it is a blue belt the same. If there's someone that's better than me, I'm going to pull out all my aces and sharpen them. So that's my advice for people who've been training for a while. And it, and it makes it more interesting. You know, it's, it's not about, oh, yeah, I'm going to sweep this guy with the sweep that I'm catching black belt sweep. Of course, you're going to sweep him. Develop another aspect of your game. And the training becomes a lot more enjoyable for yourself and, and for, your, for your training partner as well. Yeah. That's it. I first, that's what I think. I, I tell the guys like our yeah. job is make them tap us. That's the funny part. We give them the yeah, yeah, you want to tap us. So if you tap us, we did a good job. If you don't try to tap us, yeah, good job. No good job. Yeah, I yeah 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 yeah. Won't forget when when George Pereira got upset with Will. We were rolling, and man, we just met George, and that was like wow, you know, okay. And Will's rolling George, and Will caught him in a knee bar, and Will let go. And then what George turned around, sat and followed up and he goes, why'd you let go for? I would attack. No, you have to get it. I have to tap. And George's advice to us then was, if I can't get you at least as good as me, I'm taking that six degrees off. It was a six degree. It wasn't a corral back then. He goes, that's it. That's my job. My job is to make you tap me. So definitely, next time we'll make sure, make sure you tap me. You know, that was, a, that was a good thing with George. Another funny thing with George was, if you remember when we were uh, having lunch, and this was a translation thing when Brad asked him, uh, George, do you prefer gay or no gay? And we're sitting there and we're waiting for George's response. Now, George is staring at, at, at Brad, staring at him pretty like, like okay. Was a, and he asked him, Brad, why, why are you ask me this? And then Paolo stepped in straight away and went, okay, 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 in Brazilian. And George went, Ah, Brad, ah, my friend, okay, I thought you were asking me, am I gay or not gay? <laughs> that was his mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is the thing, when you, when you have one instructor non-stop, non-stop, like Paolo said, you have me as an instructor non-stop. Visa Paolo, wow, this is amazing, oh my God, he'll, he'll open, he'll, he'll do something else to fix you slightly. Visit James, if you're one of my brown belts or purple belts. Oh my God, this is great. He showed a move that fits slightly. And this is, this is what I experienced with, with George and Paolo. Like training with Paolo for so long, he built up the whole engine, everything. He did the hard work. And then someone like George came along and did some fine tuning. Oh my God, wow, this works a little bit better now. So this is important. I mean, you've, you've got a lot of black belts now that you can go around and have a training session with and absolutely get around there. I mean, you're, I mean, you've got Paolo in the city. That's, that's just, from Australia, that's the highest ranked black belt. I mean, if I was a student, I'd be down there at least once a month to, to experience the class for sure. Absolutely. And, and I highly, 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 highly recommend that, especially seminars. You know, Paolo comes along, does a seminar. You don't have to do one seminar. Do a few, man. Go to rehearsal, 
go to go to botany, travel around. We did, man. We we did a whole heap of seminars, especially when when George comes. I mean, you've got Paolo doing two seminars at every gym. You don't have to just attend one. Man, I'd go two, three for sure. Absolutely. George comes along. We do a main seminar. Does two, three seminars everywhere else. Man, we, we you know, I'd go to at least two, three at least. You know, I mean, we did. I can't count how many privates we we we've we've done with uh, with uh, with Still George. Have and have you, you don't you have to invest in it. No, you don't. Yeah, don't want yeah, to you, go you, think like and go go like that. Say when you good, good good in soccer, gonna play soccer once a month. You cannot be good in soccer. Buy five balls. <laughs> the wall, kick the soccer in the street, kick. you want to get good in jiu-jitsu, go after it, it's up to you, it's up, we uh -huh. are here, yeah, it's up to them, that's right. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's how you go. Yeah, yeah, go on, what did you say, sorry, how do you work your mental health through your recovery, okay, what's that? Yes, uh, because, because of my surgery, I think someone's saying, because of your surgery, how, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, okay, now, um, because of your surgery, okay, I've got a guy, okay, I did my ACL, how do I fix it? In training, absolutely. I, I said it to a guy, a blue belt now, it's like, oh, I need to fix my knee. Yeah, yeah. Come to training. You do the warm-up what you can. You stretch, you do your technique. When everyone's rolling, do your physio. Do In the corner, do the physio that the physio is making you do in training. You're used to coming to training, come to training. This is it, you know? If the physio is making you do certain things, well, it's just training. What the physio has told you to do is just another form of training. And this is, this is what I did. This is what I recommend to my students. So if, you know, your shoulder's injured, you put your hand in your belt, come and do your hip escapes, do your forward shoulder rolls, you know, do one-handed push-ups, do your technique. At the end of the technique, while... Uh, while uh, everyone's rolling, you go, hey, Paolo, do you mind if I do my physio on the side in the corner while everyone's rolling, my shoulder's bad? Yeah, okay, boom, 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 boom. Do your physio, do your squats. And it becomes a normal part of what you do. Recovering an injury isn't at home by yourself in the room looking at the wall. It's, it's come to training with the rest of us. You just yeah, include that as a part of your routine. Yeah, keep yeah. your mind in training, keep your, your in there, that, that atmosphere in that, that uh, I, I always do this with my students. What's wrong? My knee. Okay, what's your physio make you do? Okay, well, I'll see you Wednesday morning. Why? Well, we're going to do our warm-up. We're going to stretch. You're going to do your technique. And for the half an hour, 40 minutes we roll, you're going to do what your physio told you to do. But and, that, and, that's, and, and, that's what you do. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm telling you, if you do that, you will do more than 99% of anyone else going to that physio. Because they don't do it. Hardly anyone listens to what their physio tells them to do. But if you're doing jujitsu, you need the environment. You've got the environment for training. Training is training. Physiotherapy is another form of training. Doing exercises to strengthen your shoulder or your hip or your knee or your hamstring or whatever else you're doing is another form of training. You just supplement it in, in, in at the end with your jujitsu and your recovery will be much, much faster. And your mental and your physical recovery Will, will be accelerated compared to anyone else sitting at home trying to do these boring exercises in an environment that's not stimulating. That's, that's, that's my advice. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. That's it, Rob. So thank you. Uh, talk about, you just talked okay. to George before. Uh, of course, yeah. our this seminar is suspended, but this year, we, this is yeah. about our 20 years route. So the interviews, the seminars and everything, George will be here as soon as this thing is out. So as soon as he can fly here, Second semester, yeah. And I make a big seminar together to celebrate. But you know, like, yeah. thanks for participating. You were one of the founders and uh, the foundation. Yeah. The there was a time yeah, me, that, me. That was a time that the Roots Trophy stayed there for three years. I had to go go get the guys to get back. <laughs> hey, hey, we want to back now. The same. It's it's actually. Do you know the America's Cup? It wasn't the America's Cup. That big trophy. They had it for so long. They called it the America's Cup. We're calling it the St. George Cup now. <laughs> yeah, but I have to tell you something. It's in Chinatown. We have yeah. to come and get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, no, we, we, we did it with Paolo. Right, right from the beginning, we, this was easy what you guys have. We tell him, we drove around to Austral, places two hours drive to do seminars for free. True. We would train people and roll people at these seminars. 
we, me and him, I was a white belt with two stripes, he was a black belt. We would roll everybody to try and promote jujitsu. Uh -huh. I mean, we did, and we did this for a good three years, a long time. It was a lot of hard work. It, and, and now it's just laid at your feet, right at your feet. You know, we, yeah. we trained in, we trained on dirty mats where we, we, we didn't know. We were getting ringworms because people would come with shoes. We, you know, we, we didn't have control of the mats back then. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, whereas now things are really, really laid in front of you. And all, all you have to do is, uh, is, is just have the will, have the courage, have the strength, and then let us do our thing. This is, this is, the, this is, what, this is what we have we've spent two decades of our lives building, my whole life in, in martial arts, and just allow us, allow us to do our job and, then, and, and for you to, to reap all the rewards. That's it. All right, Rob, thank you for your time. Thank you, Paolo. For the laps and, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're going to do some more interview for the guys, let you know, but uh, Rob is always available there for whoever wants. I'm available too, so let's keep our family yeah. growing. And, uh, definitely. Good luck with the little one. The, the, the yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, looking, look, looking forward to, an, to another little monster. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now okay. David, David's going to be the big boy of the house there. Yeah, he can't wait to boss someone around. Everyone's bosses him around. He complains. I'm going to have, finally, I can tell someone to do something. Okay, maybe he's like you. He went, listen, then you have problems. Yeah, but tell him this, uh, exactly. The new one may be tougher than him, so watch out. Yeah, you got to, got to keep training. <laughs> okay. All right, take care. Sell out of the boys as well, Paolo. All right, yeah, take care. See you right. next time. See you Bye, next guys. Show. Cheers. Take Bye, care, everyone. Thank, thank you for listening. Thank you. See you, guys.